I want to go into some um, opening thoughts that we all have of why we're doing tonight. You guys read the title and you said Christian witchcraft. What is that? What is going on? We want to give this as a prophetic word to the body of Christ, some concerns that we're seeing. And let's just be honest. There are destructive teachings and destructive practices that have infiltrated the body of Christ. And we are called to be watchmen in these last days. We are called to be watchmen on the wall. And so tonight we are not attacking anybody. We're not calling out anyone by name, but we will attack the doctrines. We will attack destructive heresies, which is what they are that have infiltrated the truth and we're going to stand for truth there's times where the body needs alignment there's broken bones broken areas things out of alignment and we're going to put them back in alignment as spiritual chiropractors we're not doing this to create factions and let me give you guys a verse as we start here uh first corinthians chapter 3 verse 1 says dear brothers and sisters when i was with you i couldn't talk to you as i would spiritual people I had to talk as though you belong to the world. And look what Paul says, as though you were infants. I had to feed you with milk, not with solid food. And look what he says, because you weren't ready for anything stronger and you still aren't ready. You're still being controlled by your sinful nature. And then look at what Paul, he says, you're jealous of one another. You're quarreling with each other. Doesn't this prove that you're controlled by your sinful nature? Aren't you living like people of the world? When one of you says, I'm a follower of Paul and another one says, I'm a follower of Apollos. Aren't you acting like the world? After all, who is Paul? Who is Apollos? We're only God's servant. So what Paul is saying is, let's not build factions. Let's not get on here and say, I'm team this, or I'm team that, or I'm team Pagani, or I'm team Isaiah, or I'm team uh, Signorelli, or I'm team uh, Greg Locke, or I'm team Daniel Adams, or team Vlad. Let's not get in groups and teams. We're all one body and we're all workers. And then Paul goes, goes on to say, we don't even matter. We're just watering and planting, but it's God that's bringing the increase. So we don't want to create factions. Our goal tonight is not to make cliques or factions or division. Our goal is to bring truth as we've been doing for years. We're not doing anything tonight that we haven't been doing for years. We are calling things out. Unfortunately, the stuff we're calling out tonight is happening in the church and these teachings are affecting people. You know, sometimes we think because someone has a big ministry or a big following, it must be godly. But how many of you know you can work out and grow your muscle or you can get hurt and your muscle will swell? Sometimes big ministries are actually swelling. They're not growing. And so we are overseers. We need to call it this heretical teaching and we need to be over. uh, We need to we need to call things out when we see it in the body of Christ. Again, we're going to be polite, respectful. We're not calling names out. We're not slandering anybody, but we want to call it doctrine. Do you guys have any opening thoughts on kind of your heart behind tonight? Well, the first thing I want to say to everyone is that unlike deliverance, which is a secondary issue, witchcraft is not. Yes. Witchcraft is not a secondary issue. Witchcraft is something to divide over and to avoid. So we want everyone to know that primarily most of the time when we get on our Demon Slayer podcast, we're always, you know, talking about deliverance and everything is interwoven into deliverance. And we are we are aware that, you know, deliverance really is a secondary topic, whether you believe in it or not. But when it comes to um, heretical teachings or anything that has to do with witchcraft, um, it is not a secondary issue. It is a fundamental issue. It is mm. a main issue. And it and yes, it is worth something to divide over and it is worth thinking worth something to preach against and also for us as the church to avoid. So we don't want all of our normal followers to have a secondary mindset. We want you to have a essential mindset today as when we target this. So that way, as we go deeper and we go harder and we become more targeted and laser focused, you don't start saying in your head, but oh, but I thought this is just a secondary issue. Not when it comes to witchcraft. So I think that's one of the first things, at least I would like to establish that we have here is that this is not a secondary issue. This is an alarming issue and you have to confront it and it's essential and it needs to be avoided. And that's what we're going to do. So as the program continues, continues to go forward, we're going to get deeper, we're going to get more laser focused, and we want all of you to join with us and let's do this thing together. Mike? Yeah, so good. So good. Well, as Isaiah mentioned, we've been doing this for years, and it's very important for everybody who's watching right now to realize that we have an incredible responsibility to the body of Christ. For those of you who don't know me personally, I pastor a church called V1 Church. It's a multi-site national church with physical locations, buildings that we own and we rent and lease all across the United States. And we have a global audience as well. We've got over 136 students in V1 College across 16 nations. 
And so what happens is 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1 through 6, I have a responsibility to a large number of people. As a matter of fact, Enjoy, which is a John Maxwell company, they diagnosed the health of a church. We hit fastest growing church in America for the last four years in a row. And we didn't declare that. An outside organization looked at what's happening because we're making disciples that make disciples. And so I have a responsibility to the people that I'm shepherding uh, locally, regionally, nationally, and internationally. And so you go back to the archives of any one of my uh, social media channels and you will find me speaking into the core issues that are happening within the body of Christ. And so 1 Peter chapter 5 says, So I exhort you, the elders among you, as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker of the glory that is going to be revealed. And this is what it says, Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but mm. willingly as God would have you, not for, okay, follow me, because some of y'all need to hear this, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And so that's what really this is about, is the men in this chat have a responsibility to churches locally, regionally, nationally, and internationally. And when we speak, we speak from that designation of authority. Verse four within this same scripture says, when the chief shepherd, shepherd appears, and you will receive the unfading crown of glory. And so here's the thing, this isn't about us, it's about Jesus. And it's about, like Isaiah said, bringing proper alignment. Verse six says, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that at the proper time, he will exalt you. So here's the reality. An algorithm can exalt you. That made you popular, but it did not increase your authority. Mm. An algorithm and content can make you known, but see, there's things in the kingdom that are measured and there's things that are weighed. There's 2,000 person churches that don't weigh a lot in the kingdom. And then there's 200 person churches that carry a lot of weight. There's people with a million followers that carry very little gravity and weight in the kingdom. And there's people with 80,000 followers that carry significant weight. And so I think what we're here to do as we have these conversations, which we've been doing on a monthly basis, is to say in all humility, let's rightly divide the scriptures and let's make sure that as we're increasing, we're also increasing in weight, not just popularity. So good. I wanted to add a couple things as well, just some verses. We're going to all be overlapping, giving lots of verses. So guys, have your notepad out. Um, one thing that I'm very heartbroken about is when the people of God are coming to our services, they're hurting, they're broken. Many of them are at the end of the rope many of them financially are devastated and then we go and abuse them i'm thinking like these are people god has trusted us with these are people we're supposed to be tender with compassionate loving towards so for me guys and i'll just again we all could speak for ourselves tonight i have a zero tolerance policy when it comes to abusing the people of god i have a yeah. zero no games no fooling around when it comes to seeing the people of god being abused seeing witchcraft performed on them especially when this is happening in the church if you look at acts chapter 20 verses 28 through 30 it says keep watch over yourselves and the flock which the holy spirit has made you an overseer be shepherds of the church of god which he bought with his own blood so luke is saying listen keep watch over yourselves and keep watch over the flock and look at verse 29 i know that after i leave savage wolves will come among you and not spare the flock even from whom your own number of men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw disciples after them so the Bible's saying, listen, there's going to be wolves coming in. They're not going to spare the flock. They're going to look for leaders that, or people that follow them, that worship them, that follow after their entourage and not follow out the true way. And if you look at just one more, 1 John chapter 4, verses one, uh, verse 1 says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they're from God because many false prophets have gone to the world. So we are doing something biblical and there's 7,000 of you, praise the Lord. Let's try to hit 10,000 tonight. That would be amazing. But there are people that are going out and they are distorting the truth and we are called according to John to test the spirits. So that's, all, that's what we're doing tonight. We are testing the spirits. And I wanted to touch on what you said, Pagani, about witchcraft not being a secondary issue. Witchcraft is something, I just want to reiterate, that we should divide over. There's primary issues, 
in theology like the virgin birth, the sinlessness of Christ, the be- death, burial, and resurrection, salvation by faith alone. These are primary issues. And then there's secondary things like we talk about the timing of the rapture. What day should we worship, Saturday or Sunday? Are the right. gifts for today or not? Those are secondary issues. This is not a secondary issue. Teaching on the third eye is demonic and witchcraft. Controlling people with the Holy Spirit and saying you're gonna control their body is demonic and witchcraft. Teaching New Age doctrine, which we're gonna go into in New Age spirituality and mysticism is New Age and witchcraft. Telling people to open themselves up to familiar spirits or hearing dead loved ones give you information while you're prophesying that's divination that is witchcraft and so our calling first corinthians chapter 5 verse 12 through 13 paul says it's my responsibility to judge it's not my responsibility to judge outsiders but it certainly is your responsibility to judge those inside the church that are sinning god will judge those on the outside but the scripture says you must remove the evil person from among you so guys absolutely biblical Matthew 7 says, watch out for false teachers uh, in sheep's clothing. So we know that the devil's not going to come to us with horns. He's going to come acting like a preacher, acting like a pastor in sheep's clothing. And so we want to be able to discern these things. And then I just want to give two more verses and I'll pass over to you guys. Um, 2 Corinthians 11 verses 3 through 5. It says, but I fear that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted. Look at this, guys. Just as Eve was deceived by the serpent. So Paul says the same way the serpent came and deceived Eve, Paul says, I fear that you will also be corrupted in that same way. And then verse four of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he says, you happily put up with what anyone tells you, even if they preach a different Jesus, a different spirit or a different gospel. Guys, we have to push back against these teachings. We can't be okay with false teachings, false gospel, heretical messages, false spirits, new age spirits. And then verse five, he says, I consider myself inferior to the super apostles who are teaching these things. And then I wanna give you one more. This is 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15. These people are false apostles. They are deceitful workers. They disguise themselves. Look at this, Pagani. They disguise themselves as apostles of Christ, but I'm not surprised. This is what Paul says. Even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it's no wonder that his servants, these are claiming to be apostles, also disguise themselves as servants of of unrighteousness and the day or servants of righteousness. And then end, they will get the punishment their wicked deeds deserve. So I just wanted to touch on that, Mike. I don't know if you have thoughts about secondary versus primary. I know this is something people say, don't divide, brother. Don't bring division in the church. Witchcraft is something to divide over. It's something to avoid. If we know somebody is performing witchcraft, somebody has to speak out. Somebody has to say something about this because it's definitely not okay and it's not biblical.